The first story we have is from the Daily Mail, Virginia, Georgia, and North Carolina declare state of emergency over gas shortages after Colonial Pipeline hack as 1,000 fuel stations run dry in Southeast as people panic by. They say Ralph Northam and Brian Kemp, governors of Virginia and Georgia, declared a state, state of emergency on Tuesday. On Monday, the governor of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, took a similar step to deal with the fuel crisis. Now, they go on to mention a lot of stuff most of us already know, that the pipeline was hacked. It's ransomware. It's the largest pipeline in the country. I'm not entirely convinced. I, th- I think we're being lied to by the government. You know, so we heard from, the, from a DHS, uh, one of the people, spokespeople from the DHS, there's no shortage. We're seeing the New York Times say there's no long lines. There was another story, I can't remember which outlet it was, saying there's, there's no long lines. Everyone calm down. But here's what I find strange. The Daily Mail is reporting it's panic buying. Mm. Why, why is it so heavily prominent in North Carolina? Is it just something about people in North Carolina where they're more prone to panic and buying? Is it just panic buying? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know um, why North Carolina in particular. I will say um, in the, the region of the country where I live and even coming here tonight, every gas station I passed had very long lines. You don't live far away from us. No. and Everybody and, knows where we live, by the way, just so you know. And I filled up this morning. I got up early because I saw the news last night and I've been following this. And I thought, you know what? I'm just uh, going to get up. And first thing I did was I took my car. Uh, I, I took the other car. I took our gas cans and I just filled up everything just to be safe. So was I panic buying? Absolutely. I was. I'm sure a lot of people are doing the same. But... It raises a larger question about infrastructure. And and just to think a couple of weeks ago when the media cycle was easier, right? It's amazing how crazy and how fast the media cycle goes. Yeah. When when the president introduces infrastructure bill and everyone began joking, saying healthcare is infrastructure and poetry is infrastructure and childhood dreams are infrastructure. No, this really is infrastructure. Like infrastructure is infrastructure. And the, I think one of the biggest challenges I have in my industry is that Oil and gas isn't always sexy. Energy isn't always sexy. It's not titillating. It's not guns. It's not abortion. No, no, no. It's they, not, they, half the country hates it. But but boy, oh boy, is it really the lifeblood of our economy. And we're getting a taste of what happens when, when it's tinkered with. This is what, what freaks me out. You, saw, you, you, you remember when Greta Thunberg was like, we're not talking about 2030 or 2022. Mm. We want right now. Yes. Shut it down. You got it. Look what's happening yep. when there's just... 45% of the supply on the, on, the south, on the East Coast and the Southeast is disrupted. This is what happens. What do you think would happen if they actually got their way and shut down everything? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and we have a larger energy infrastructure problem because most of, us, most of our refining happens in very strategic areas, right? The, the refining happens in the Gulf because historically we imported most of our oil. It was bre- uh, cheaper to bring it in by barge. So you wanted it by the water. And the Eastern Seaboard, because it was coming from from uh, uh, the Middle East, the Eastern Seaboard was all really expensive real estate. So there was nowhere to go. So they went around Florida and they ended, they ended up in the Gulf Coast and that's where the refining is. And if you see a map of the refineries and then a map of the pipelines, pipelines everywhere, but there really is just one pipeline from the Gulf Coast all the way, and that's Colonial Pipeline, and it wow. is a major <clears throat> pipeline. Should we have built a second, a third, a fourth? Absolutely. Should we have refining in the Northeast? We should, but you also have to remember we refine a lot in the South because just in terms of chemistry, refining takes a lot of heat. It's less of, uh, less expensive and more efficient to refine something that is already warm than to do it in a cold environment. So, of so, course, we refine in the so South. So this is like the, the barges bring the raw, patro- the crude petroleum. Yes. And these refineries turn it into other stuff, the, like, like gas. What, what else do they make? The, 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 the crude that comes out of the ground is refined into literally hundreds of different products. So the, re- the reason why my organization, why, I, why we fight sometimes a lot of these re- uh, renewable fuel standards and cafe standards is not because we don't believe in, in, in protecting the environment, but because if you are – California, for example – has over 50 different blends of oil, right? For, for, different, for different seasons, for different vehicles. If you're a refinery and you have to produce 50 products, think of a bartender. It's a lot easier just to be pouring beers, but if you have to make 50 different cocktails, well, every time you've got to stop, you've got to switch. Well, every time you do that, it drives up the price a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. This one pipeline is bringing not just one type of fuel, but multiple types of fuels. And every state has their own special blend because a bunch of idiot politicians who know nothing about energy pass a law. They're like, we want the blend to look like this. And and, and everyone claps. And that's so the now problem. They need, so, so this pipeline isn't just like one big tube. No. It's like a bunch of small tubes Absolutely. in a big tube exactly a I, series I, of tubes and they have said some of the smaller ones and i forget what the, there is a phrase for it and, and i don't know if they're called the ancillary ones the the secondary ones but there is a phrase for them a lot of those the i forget oh, i wish i remember the names a lot of them are starting to come online but the big jammies 
they're going to be offline for a little while. And that's really, really frightening. So I'm, I'm hearing uh, people are tweeting out that we're importing gas now from Europe. We're trying to bring in some energy. Is that true? Well, you know, this is where energy gets a little bit ugly because we've always imported, quote unquote, because we refine. So, for example, some of the big energy companies, companies really that don't like me necessarily because they don't, they will say you shouldn't ban uh, uh, imports from the Middle East because we refine those those oil and, and this is bad for our company. And my response is, I'm not here for your company. I'm here what is good for America. And if importing oil from the Middle East is good for your company, what the heck do I care? Right. So but if you're a refiner, do you want to buy Saudi oil at nine dollars a barrel or do you want to buy Permian Basin oil at forty five dollars a barrel? I'll buy the Saudi oil. Well, th that's not good for America. And they would say, well, but it's good because then we sell it cheaper into the American grid at the expense of American energy interests. Right. So we do always import, quote unquote, because we refine it, but not on the Pacific Coast. Alaska. How, think how crazy this is. Alaska sends its oil at this point now to China to be refined to come back to America because we can't <laughs> we can't build a refinery they, in the Northwest. They do that with a lot of products. We can't build refineries in the Pacific Northwest. The very green groups that say we need to get off fossil fuels are making us go 9000 miles across the Pacific to refine in China. And by the way, the Chinese refineries are environmental standards you would not believe right oh Flaw amazing oh <laughs> gosh yes. yeah. and then we barge it back to america but no, no no you you mean like awful oh my god yeah. it sounded like you're about to say they're so great <laughs> you would not believe how amazing all the nine-year-old girls that work in those refineries <laughs> they get paid at least a dollar a day oh wow right exactly so so china then benefits from the fact that the green groups that don't allow us to build a refinery in america because it's bad for the environment same with the keystone pipeline Right. We, the very first conversation I was here, Keystone had just Joe happened. Biden shut it down. Right. Is that oil not going to Houston? Of course, it's going to Houston, but it's going by train or this, by truck. I, I'm sorry, man. This is just infuriating me because, you know, what? I, I referred to this today as a political drive by. Yeah. You look at you look at uh, MSNBC and CNN. You have all of all of those viewers and voters stopped watching. Yeah. Now that Trump isn't president anymore, they based their vote off of hating somebody, not for something. Yeah. And the first thing we get now, a lot of people were in favor of Joe Biden shutting down Keystone. Now Keystone's shut down. A lot of union guys lost their jobs. And now we're in, we're, we're dealing with this crisis with the, with this pipeline. Well, they're coming out and saying there's no shortage. There's mm -hmm. no shortage. I, I, I don't I, I'm sorry if I don't believe them. No. I mean, there's a shortage at the gas stations. It's a fact. Yes. And for whatever reason, maybe it's panic or otherwise, they're not able to get the, the, the fuel back up there. So even if it is panic, what do you think happens? Panic yeah. should be should be baked into the, 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 the plan. We should know if there is a disruption, panic happens. This well, is, thanks to Joe Biden, Keystone's not going to be available. It, it, it yeah. makes me think of don't buy them. We don't need you don't need a mask. Remember that right when it came out, Fauci was like Fauci said that you don't need them for two weeks. They didn't want to run on the masks. If they said. There's an oil shortage. There would be a run on the oil. They don't want to run on the oil. Yeah. So, and so, and so, it, it's a good. It's a good point. Fauci came out later and admitted we were concerned that medical professionals wouldn't get it. So we said that, and that's what I see now. When the New York Times said there's no long lines, mm. I think what happens is these people in media, no longer is their job to inform the population so they can make decisions for themselves. They've become the the, the self-appointed nannies of the state. Where the New York Times is like, just tell them nothing's happening, so they stay home. But then people who pay attention, like, I mean, you had the biggest advantage. You're the energy guy, Daniel. So when this happened, you probably got word before anybody else. <laughs> and you're like, better go to the gas station. People are like, what are you doing? Don't mind me. I'm just filling up all these tanks. I did tell my family very early on that they <laughs> want to go. And I should have I made it more of a public announcement. But yeah, like a lot of this oh, is I'm not foreseeable. You for it, no, you know. of course, I, I know. But a lot of this is foreseeable. Um, and, and there is a supply issue, right? Keystone is a supply issue. As you reduce the supply of any good and the demand does not diminish, well, the price is going to escalate. So if you could say, well, I don't like Keystone, it's bad for the environment. I'm saying that when you take it away, you are causing a supply concern that's still coming. Like I said, it's coming by rail or it's coming by by car, uh, by truck, but that's expensive. So we are the goal. It takes fuel to do that. It does. Of course it does. Yeah. The goal of the, the, the one of the jobs of the president, and this is where I do lay this at the feet of President Biden. Did he cause the cyber attack? I lay this at the feet of President Biden because the president's we all know is extremely powerful and can send signals that can tank the stock market yeah. or can make industries go through the roof. Trump would tweet 
and Absolutely. people would become millionaires or lose Absolutely. a million dollars. And that is the power. And 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 for for good or ill, that is the power of the president. Joe Biden has been sending signals since the campaign during transition and now as president, and he does not want to accept the consequences of those signals. So he signaled that he has no problem with any illegal immigrant coming across the border. What do we have now? Four and five times the record. They're wearing, they're wearing those shirts. Biden, please let us in. He and then, sent a signal, right? And yeah. people listened and they responded. He sent a signal that Israel's not necessarily our friend. I know that's the next topic. He gave money back to the Palestinians, right? He re sent, re restarted that funding. He sent a signal that Israel is not our strategic partner. What's happening right now in Israel? He sent a signal on day one that energy infrastructure is not important. It's, he signed that keystone thing. He sent a signal and people are responding. I tweeted... You know, I guess build back better means crumbling infrastructure, crisis in the Middle East, mass yeah. exodus from the workforce, unemployment. And I get these lefties being like, it was, it was Trump's fault or whatever. And I'm like, oh, it's a magical coincidence yeah. that Biden's policy ending the executive orders from Donald Trump, the remain in Mexico, uh, uh, the, the, the migrant protection protocols remain in Mexico policy or shutting down Keystone Pipeline or the $300 unemployment stimulus. Those policies, which he's enacted in the past several months, have no impact on those th those crises that are yeah. happening right now. It's It's absurd to think. That it's a coincidence. And we had, what was it, David Frum, I think, was it Frum? Yeah. Probably. Who was like, oh, but everyone was cheering for Trump's peace in the, in the Middle East. Oh, and it's right. like, <laughs> oh, and then and then, and then then three months in with Joe Biden, it's Trump's fault yeah, now. Yeah, of course. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a magical coincidence. It was, it's, it, it's as if they believe Donald Trump was holding the country together with duct tape. Yeah. And then as soon as he left, now all the problems are emerging. Sorry. 2019, Jim Cramer, CN, was it CNBC, I think? Mm -hmm. Best numbers of our lives. The economy was a boom. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. He was spending a lot of money. And of, that bill yep. always comes due. But it's very different compared to what we saw with Republicans and Democrats last year. Just cranking up the stimulus. Now we've got to pay for it. Yeah. Now, now we have this oil pipeline. It's... Uh, Crumbling infrastructure is an understatement. When we have a real problem in America politically because we live in an Instagram, social media, Twitter world, uh, it's great to, for fast communication, uh, communication and agility, but it's bad because candidates now target their entire campaign around that. Build Back Better is a wonderful alliterative bumper sticker. It is not <laughs> policy, right? And, right? and all of his proclamations, and my dad told me, Joey, and he looked me in the eye, and all those little stories are cute on the campaign trail, but now you actually have to govern. And I don't think, kind of like President Obama, I don't think President Biden really wants to govern. I think I, he, I agree, I I think agree. he likes the uh, campaign. I don't think confronting a guy who was banging a straight razor on a, on a curb, putting in a rain barrel to get it all rusty, I don't think that's the experience someone needs to actually run the country, but it was a great story, I guess. You know, people had a laugh about it. Uh, what, did, what did he call? Uh, what did he call that corn, guy? Corn pop? No, he called corn pop uh, a name. Do you remember what the, the name? Bad he called? dude. The no, 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 no. He, 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 he said Esther. He called it. Oh, he called I called it Esther. Esther Williams. Yeah, yeah, which I'm, 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 I'm happy to say I'm too young. Yeah, I'm too young to know what Esther Williams, <laughs> who Esther Williams is, or why that was important. I but, think, yeah. I, I think Joe Biden just wanted to be president, yeah. and then I'm sure that you know he he stands. He's probably sitting in a wheelchair, looking in the mirror with a smile on his face, and people are running around frantic behind him. There's like papers flying, and the phones ringing off the hook, and like his Things assistant's hair's fire. all frazzled, and they're like, <laughs> I don't know what to do about Israel. And Biden's like, yeah. <laughs> president. <laughs> Come on, man. You know what? I That's bet it. he didn't even want to be president because he didn't run in 2016. Made me think like he's he doesn't want it. He doesn't care. He would have run 100 percent. The VP comes out. They go right into it. Seamless. He didn't want I it. I think the DNC. He hated him. Trump. Yeah, they, they, they brought <laughs> him up. He was like, I have a right. He felt like a, a, a force of God. Like, I, this is my purpose here. I must do this. He didn't want it. He mm. wasn't capable. He just went along. He got pushed along. Now, I'll say Donald Trump really wanted. Yes. It. And mm. he still does. And he yeah. still does. Um, not like he was a perfect, like I, there's a lot of people who think he's, you know, they call him the God emperor, most of them joking, but some yeah. people are serious. I think it would, we, we would have been better off. I, I certainly think so. But I guess the, 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 uh, the interests of the military industrial complex types and the international monetary fund types, they weren't too happy with Donald Trump being like America, America. They're like, no, no, no. We, we, we make money off of, you know, exporting the reserve currency and putting guns in a bunch of different countries. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat. 
and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.